All right. How's everybody feeling? I forgot about that hill. When I told you guys earlier, we wanted more hills. I forgot about that one. My fault. So, I forgot about that one. I think we might got one more, too, in a minute. But it's not too bad. That was, the, the earlier one was the worst. Um, so, basically what we just did is we just followed the route of the Union Reserve Corps as they kind of swing into position here to reinforce Snodgrass Hill. The main Union line, General Thomas's line, is kind of on the next hill over. So Snodgrass Hill really is not just one hill. It's really kind of three hills that kind of form a ridge together. We're on what's called, what we kind of call Hill 3. Thomas's line is kind of back off that direction, kind of anchored on Hill 2 and 1. The Confederates are coming up around the right. That's what these Confederate monuments are right there, the Tennessee Infantry Monument, marking uh, where, where uh, a whole brigade of Tennesseans pushes up kind of right over this ridge here. And literally, I mean, you, you, this is gonna this is gonna be something. It, 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 when I describe it to you, you're gonna think that's a bad like movie plot. Right as the Confederates are starting to push up over this ridge, Granger's troops come up over that ridge right behind you, and they kind of run into each other right here. The Union Army is able to push the Confederates back down into the ravine here behind us. But that's kind of why we see monuments facing all sorts of different directions. Illinois Monument facing that way, because that's the direction they're going. you got a Tennessee Monument for the 25th Tennessee Infantry that they're sitting on facing that way, because that's where they're going. we a very overlapped, chaotic fight for just a few minutes here. The Yanks are coming, and they have saved the day for George Thomas. And Granger's men are able to hold the right for most of the rest of the afternoon on September 20th into the evening. The other thing I want to talk about for just a second and we'll get into this a little bit more in just a few minutes, is fast forward to 1917. The United States has declared war. This is this existential threat to democracy in the world. This is kind of how President Wilson is, uh, is, is promoting this. We have to make the world safe for democracy. The war is kind of marketed that way to the American public. If we don't win this war then everything that we are as a nation is done. That's no pressure, right? We know that the War Department, who was administering Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park at that time, we know that at the National Military Parks, not only this one, but at Gettysburg, Shiloh, Vicksburg, we know that the War Department went through and made a list prioritizing every piece of metal on the battlefield for melting it down for scrap. Unfortunately, the list for Chickamauga has not yet been found. It's buried in an archive somewhere. I'm going to find it one day. And I, I will not stop talking about it for a very long time once I find it. <laughs> that list for Gettysburg does exist. So to kind of tell you a little bit of a Gettysburg story to highlight something that may have happened here. At Gettysburg, they listed out every piece of metal, every cast iron tablet, every bit of fence that lined monuments, every plaque that was on monuments. And they said, these are the ones we're going to pop off first to melt for scrap. Now, the first ones that they're going to do are things like fences. The last one that they're going to do at Gettysburg, for those of you guys that have been up there, is the big Virginia monument there at Pickett's Charge. Figure they didn't want to... Wanna, they figured if they melted that one down to try to beat the Germans, well, then they'd probably have to fight the Virginians again. They didn't want to do that. So that's a question that the country is facing. Are we willing to destroy our monuments to our last war in order to win this one? We know that that list exists somewhere for this battlefield. We know that there were instances of that happening in a very limited basis. Unfortunately, we don't know which monuments they did that to. What we do know is that dotting the battlefield today are monuments that used to have a cast iron plaque on it. Did this plaque get popped off and melted down for scrap? Is the metal from that plaque sitting buried in a field somewhere in western France? We don't know. Maybe. It could also be sitting in somebody's attic. But that's kind of a question that, that I can't help but think about. 
I know in the news today, there's all these discussions about, oh, we're going to move monuments, we're going to take monuments down, all this stuff. In 1917, we as a nation said, at our national military parks, we're willing to destroy a monument to win a war. That's a really fascinating thing to just think about. I don't have an answer for that, like whether we should or shouldn't do that. I just think it's really fascinating to, to think about. And, and, I, and I challenge you guys to kind of think about that as you explore the park today. You know, if you see a monument, particularly a bronze one, a metal one, that's missing plaques off of it or missing pieces off of it, kind of ask yourself that question. Are we, what is the price we're willing to pay for victory? We know in 1917, these monuments were the price we were willing to pay, at least to some degree. Thankfully, they never had to do this in large scale. I mean, according to kind of that Gettysburg listing, um, if it had gotten to the point of, say, melting down the, 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 the Virginia monument, that's like the Germans are marching through North Carolina for Pennsylvania. I mean, that's, it's, the, things are bad. Then. They'd never make it through North Carolina. Well, there we go. Oh, we, he's got a Charlotte shirt on. Okay. He's defending it. All right. See, they, and they knew that. They knew he was there. And he was good. So, um, so again, we don't know that, but it's something that's, that's interesting to ponder. And that's going to be something that I'm going to kind of ask you guys about a little bit. And a few other places as we visit some other spots where things were done to this battlefield in the name of victory. In the name of preserving democracy. On a battlefield that kind of reunites the country, that creates the United States as we know it today, we were willing to kind of destroy that in order to preserve the ideals of the United States elsewhere. That's a really cool idea to me. Everybody caught their breath? Questions, comments, concerns? We just had a gentleman check the cannon down there, so I wonder what date did he find on it? Didn't see a date on that one? Okay. I can tell you that particular cannon right there is an 1841 model 12 pound howitzer. Um, they made those beginning in 1841 and they made them up until 1861. So it's made kind of in a 20 year gap. Um, made a few of them in 62, but so there's about a 20 year gap that that one could be made in. But chances are that's a pre war flag. Yep, that's the size of the ball. Yep, so if you hear me say like a 12, here's somebody say a 12 pound cannon, that's not the weight of the cannon. That thing weighs much more than 12 pounds. Um, that's the weight of the cannonball that it can fire. All right, so what we're getting ready to do 